scheduling agreement with the Atlantic Coast Conference that dates back to 2014. Clemson won the toss and deferred. Notre Dame will receive the opening kickoff. And it's Jadarian Price back deep who signals for a fair catch. We mentioned a lot of injuries for Clemson. With more on that, we say hello to Molly McGrath. Well, Sean, it's just one of those years for Clemson. Head coach Dabo Sweeney pointed out there are 10 injured players out today who would have started or contributed significantly in this game. Headlined by running back Will Shipley, who's out in day-to-day -day with a concussion sustained last week. Left guard Marcus Tate suffered a season-ending knee injury in practice this week, and a depleted secondary suffers another blow. Veteran safety Jalen Phillips out with a shoulder injury that he's been battling for some time. the running back one of the best in the country and that front for Clemson ready for him it's the true freshman Peter Woods with the stop we expect to see a lot of young players on defense against Sam Hartman in his first and only season at Notre Dame after five at Wake Forest having a very good year five interceptions they all came in two games Three in their loss at Louisville, two last week in their 58-7 win against Pittsburgh. They go to the pistol. Hartman was 0-4 as a starting quarterback against Clemson. His Wake Forest teams were 0-5. How about that run by Estime? A couple of leaps over tacklers. And he's all the way out to the 49-yard line. And just a great job, too, by the offensive line. Look at the polling guard and tackle. There, Pat Coogan, the guard, Joe Ald, the outstanding tackle, kicking out the right side of that Clemson defensive line. And how about the hurdle from Estime up and over the top for a big back? My goodness, man, he's got all the moves. His power and speed. He told us yesterday he's a great dancer because he has good hips. Flags before the snap of the ball. Adam Savoie is the referee. It's going to be a false start against the Irish. False start. Offense, not all 11 players were set prior to the snap. Five yard penalty. It's first down. Marcus Freeman's in his second year as head coach at Notre Dame. They believe if they win out, they will be heading to a New Year's Six Bowl. Hard to imagine they wouldn't be. They're seven and two right now. And that win against Clemson is the highest ranked opponent against which Freeman has led the Irish to victory. They were number five last year when they went to South Bend and lost to the Irish. They were 8-0. And, oh. and Clemson is 7-7 seven and seven since. Here's Estime again. All the way inside the 30-yard line of Clemson. Run down by Andrew Makuba. The safety, 26 more for Estime. Just a great matchup of good versus good. The defensive line for Clemson has been outstanding all season long, but this Notre Dame offensive line has really progressed these last few weeks. Joe Alt's been terrific, the left tackle, and the guards are continuing to get more experience. They get Estime on the edge for another nice game. And they believe they have the best tandem of tackles in Joe Alt, the left tackle, and Blake Fisher, the right tackle, in the country. The guards are first-year starters, and as you said, Greg, they've really come on as the year's gone along. Jadari and Price, the ball carrier. Stopped by Tyler Davis, veteran member of that defensive front. The Clemson defense has played well, holding opponents to 21 points per game, despite the fact that the offense has put them in difficult situations over and over and over again by virtue of the turnovers. Have a lot of really talented young pieces too and you're down the stretch they'll be able to really assess what they have with some of the freshmen playing pivotal roles on defense second and seven sent out wide by hartman and barry chris tyree andrew makuba the very talented junior safety from austin texas dropped it for a loss of three and the throw from hartman just a little bit off the mark you see him throw to tyree who has to adjust his body and takes his momentum backwards Kuba goes up and makes an outstanding tackle. Third down and ten. They are in field goal range for Spencer Schrader is a huge leg. Jabron Payne has come on the field and running back now for the Irish. 
He gets the carry. Lowers his head. Got chopped down well short of the first down at the 25-yard line by Kylan Griffin. Another true freshman who'll see more action due to those injuries delineated by Molly. He hasn't even played a snap for the last three games, but he's out there to start today. So here's Schrader. There is zero breeze to speak of. This will be a 43-yard try. 10 out of 15 in his first year at Notre Dame after four at South Florida. Bryce McPherson, the punter, is the holder, and that one is good. That one almost landed in Greenville. Three points on the opening possession for Notre Dame. It'll be Kate Klubnick's turn on offense. In 2015, an epic game played in Hurricane Joaquin, a torrential rain throughout. And a two-point Clemson victory really changed the trajectory of the program according to Dabo Swinney. The kickoff from Schrader is a touchback. So here comes Clemson for the first time on offense. Led by the sophomore from Austin, Texas, Cade Klubnick. Just turned 20 years old last month. 64%, 243 yards per game. Passing, he's also an effective runner. The problem on their offense has been turnovers. They've lost 15, including 10 fumbles. Only Nebraska has lost more fumbles nationwide. Phil Maffa, he'll see the bulk of the ball carrying today without Will Shipley, and he ran into JT Bertrand, the linebacker, the leading tackler for Notre Dame. Obviously, you never want to be without Will Shipley, but Phil Maffa and the running back group as a whole, they feel like that's one of their deeper position groups. And Maffa, while not necessarily the home run hitting ability that Shipley has, very patient runner and difficult to bring down as he hits the hole. Averages six yards per carry. He got 10 on the first one. He gets five on that one. 6 1 2 30 is Maffa. There's Shipley on the sidelines. They're leading rusher. Their fifth leading receiver. They're leading kickoff return man. The guy who helps Clemson in so many ways, but suffered a concussion last week in their loss at NC State and still not able to go. Put Maffa out wide, and the throw over the middle is incomplete. Off the hands of Troy Stellato, then he got swung around for a while by Bertrand, and some in the crowd didn't like that. It's a very good Notre Dame defense, giving up just 15.3 points per game. That is 10th in the country, their second year under the coordinator, Al Golden. Came in wanting to play better red zone defense, get more takeaways, defend the long pass better than they did a year ago, and they've done all of that very well. Third down and five. Off his back foot, Klubnik throws it up for grabs. Stilato trying to turn to the ball, goes down. Cam Hart had the coverage. There's Al Golden who's done a tremendous job with this Notre Dame defense. Kane Klubnick sees press coverage, one-on-one -on -one to the outside. Unfortunately, the throw is just a little bit underthrown and behind Stilato, who's trying to adjust, but can't quite stay upright long enough to track that ball down. Just a little off the mark from Klubnick. Aiden Swanson is their putter. Tyree back for it. He brought a punt back for a touchdown last week against Pitt. 82 yards. It was a magnificent return. Broke many tackles. Good job by Swanson. It's out of bounds at the 14. A 46-yard punt and no return. Well, there are the numbers we talked about for Sam Hartman, who played well against Clemson. Our group did that game last year in Winston-Salem, and it was a shootout. But he's well aware of that 0-4 record, he said. We visited yesterday. My parents live in Charleston now in South Carolina. They're surrounded by Clemson fans. And I don't want them to continue to hear about the fact their son has never defeated the Clemson Tigers. <laughs> it's a personal one for sure. Audrey Estime had a big opening drive, and he starts this one. 
with a run of about eight. Barrett Carter made the tackle. Estime averages 100 yards per game on the ground, and he's on a pace to blow by that with 57 already on four carries. I'm so impressed with Audrick Estime. Early in his career, just the big body back, more of a thumper. My goodness, he's got so much more patience terrific top end speed has really rounded himself into a well-rounded back that can also be a factor in the passing game. It's 99 yards for a thousand yard season. They were ready for him that time. He got stood up at the line of scrimmage by Demonte Capehart. Man, and you'll see Capehart working right against Zeke Carell, the center, and he just walks him right back as Capehart Big body at 320 pounds, an excellent run stopper, and he shows it off right there with the power and strength inside. Loss of two. Seven minutes gone by. Three-nothing Irish. Third down and four. section of the year. Download the Taco Bell app to learn more. And despite the 4-4 four and four record, these fans still in good voice here in the early afternoon. And Green's longest career punt return, 16 yards, has the Tigers at the Notre Dame 41. It's an Irish blitz. So we hope Tyler's happy. Back to you, Sean. All right, Kevin, thank you. Jeremiah Love is the running back for the Irish on first down. Sam Hartman looks at Love in the flat, now throws deeper. An excellent attempt. 
attempt to make a diving catch by Jaden Greathouse. For the most part, the Irish healthy. They are without Mitchell Evans, the excellent tight end who actually is their leading receiver for the year with 29 catches. He went out for the year last week with an ACL injury against Pittsburgh. That's a massive loss, too. The go-to guy for Sam Hartman. Evans has been so dependable on third down especially, so his absence clearly felt by the Irish offense. Now to the pistol with Love. The talented freshman still the running back, and they stopped the play before the snap for a timeout. Prior to the snap, timeout. Clemson, their first. 30 seconds. Tigers lead 7 to 3. 648 to go in the first quarter here in Clemson, South Carolina. Now it's only the third time Notre Dame has ever played here. Cheap. I did not cheat. I well, promise. If you read the game notes from either team, and I assume that you did, being the studious sort that you are, <laughs> it was all over the notes. Jeremiah Love, <laughs> the ball carrier. Two possessions in a row right now without estimating. Well, here is the answer to the Aflac trivia question. And let it be known that I did say Aflac. <laughs> <laughs> and the answer is Joe Montana. First meeting ever between these two schools, 1970. Avion Terrell, a moment ago. Kylan Griffin's already made a play in this game. TJ Parker, the defensive end is terrific. And in time, I would imagine we'll hear AJ Hoffler's name as well at defensive end. Bryce McPherson. Beautiful punt. High and deep. Drives Green back to the 17 yard line. To the 24. The solid job as the punt returner. They're without Antonio Williams as they've been for much of the year. Stay tuned. ABC more great college football action today. Last edition of Bedlam, at least for a while. 3:30. Night ranked Oklahoma, number 22, Oklahoma State. 7:30. A huge tilt out of the Pac-12, number five, Washington, and 20th ranked USC. The reigning Heisman Trophy winner and the Michael Penix Jr. quarterback in Washington. Many believe he's the front runner to win that prestigious award this year. It would be hard to push back on that. That's the best quarterback matchup of the weekend. Klubnik gave it to Moffa. Riley Mills made the tackle, a gain of two. Has to be so encouraging for offensive coordinator Garrett Riley to see the offensive line for Clemson, a group that's been much maligned, very, very average all season long. Have been without some pieces with Walker Parks, Marcus Tate, the left guard is out today. So they're getting some push against what is a formidable front. target. Garrett Riley, the offensive coordinator, said yesterday they'd like to get him more involved. He was highly recruited. Hasn't really lived up to the hype coming in. Third down and four. Notre Dame showing blitz. They bring pressure and the pass incomplete. Intended again for Randall. And broken up by Benjamin Morrison, the sophomore cornerback, freshman All-American a year ago. Yeah, had an incredible game against Clemson last year, a couple picks. You see the break on the slant, how quickly he gets there and closes that initial separation, swats the right arm in, and breaks the pass up. That's a great pass breakup by Morrison. Well, here's Tyree. Chris Tyree, right here. Back for the punt from Swanson. And another good punt. Oh, it's mossed by Tyree! And Clemson has it! At the 22-yard line, the snapper, Philip Lorenzo, wound up with the ball. Tyree, one of 
the best players on the Irish team. Gets a little bit off guard. Looks as if the ball hits the bottom of his face mask as he's trying to corral it. Dabo Sweeney loving what he's seeing because these are the mistakes that his team has been making these last few weeks. And now, excellent starting field position for Cade Klubnik in the Clemson offense. Notre Dame brilliant on special teams. Tyree perhaps bothered by looking into a very bright sun here in the early afternoon. Great field position. They're at the 22. Moffa running behind a patchwork offensive line. Seven yard gain. continue running the football like this. They won't be able to put too much pressure on Kate Klubnik, but the red zone woes have been significant. Got to continue to create seams in the run game because these windows have been small and Klubnik struggled. Given time, Klubnik over the middle, and it is incomplete and almost intercepted by Xavier Watts. He was trying to get it to say Genesis a tight end. And Watts, who already leads the nation with six interceptions, nearly had number seven. He's had two in each of the last two games. First Notre Dame player ever with multiple interceptions in back-to-back -back games. He's been terrific. Guy that was a converted wide receiver, still has the receiver hands, but has unbelievable instincts for a guy that hasn't been playing safety very long. Third down and three. Here's to make the play, but Moffa showcasing the strength. As this time he breaks through the arm tackle of Leofau and finishes over the top of Morrison. Convert on third and short. 71 yards rushing for Moffa. Showing nifty footwork as he works his way to the four-yard line. The average is 55 yards per game as Shipley's backup. And he's already passed that number here in the first quarter. He's averaging 11 yards per carry. Garrett Riley's got with some zone read concepts down here, giving freedom to Cade Klubnik to read the end man on the line of scrimmage. Because of some of their miscues and fumbles, they've kind of drifted away from those and have been a little more predictable with the downhill run game. I like quarterback draw down here as well. Klubnik waving frantically, and uh, they finally use a timeout after all the histrionics. Clemson, their second. Well, Clemson's offense, one of the worst in the country in the red zone. Notre Dame's defense, second in red zone defense. Their opponents scoring, whether it's a touchdown or a field goal, just 64% of the time. Only Michigan is better in that stat. And we talked about the improvement of the Notre Dame defense. Last year, they were 129th in red zone defense. A remarkable turnaround. It's been a terrific, terrific turnaround. A lot of it has to do with how they've played in the front seven defensively. They've always, at least the last handful of years, they've had great perimeter weapons being able to play man coverage as those windows get a little tighter. But so far today, in a matchup that I think most people thought would be dominated by the Notre Dame defensive line is actually being won by a makeshift Clemson offensive line, at least to this point. And improves the true freshman Harris Sewell at right guard. Mafa off the direct snap. A one-yard gain, and that's all. And without Marcus Tate, who started every game at left guard this season, hurt during the week, as Molly said. So Chad Howard, a backup, steps in there. Tristan Lee is the starter left tackle. He's also started at guard. Putnam is the center. He's been a stalwart, as is the right tackle, Miller. And it's the freshman, Sewell, at right guard. On third and goal. Put on a burning school here in the slot. Man covered as he want to hit. They look in his direction. They fire in his direction. And the ball came out. For a moment, the crowd thought it was a touchdown. There is no signal. Notre Dame came away with the ball. And we're still waiting for a ruling. Ruling on the field is an incomplete pass. It's fourth down. As 
you can see pretty decent coverage there by D.J. Brown. It's, the ball is really well placed. I wonder now, does he complete the catch? Nope. Ball's on the ground. Good call. Ruling on the field of an incomplete pass is under further review. Remus Kozik is the replay official. It's certainly worth taking a deeper look. And the injuries at wide receiver, Brenningstool has become more and more of a target in recent weeks. 13 catches in the last two games, two touchdowns. It was a great effort there by Brenningstool. Strong hands and having it draped there alongside his body. It looks like there at the end it gets dislodged. All on the field being incomplete. I haven't seen enough video evidence to overturn. So the Jonathan White, when we talk about reasons why Clemson, top 10 in the preseason, is 4-4 four and four and unranked. The kicking issues as well. They're 7 out of 14 in field goals this year. Only four teams have worse field goal percentages. White's got brought out of retirement to become their kicker. Florida State game, and he's been more solid. He's now made six of his last eight. That one's good from 21, and it's a seven-point lead for Clemson. We're back in eight seconds after word from Ram Trucks. Ram Trucks, built to serve. Sean McDonough, Greg McElroy, and Molly McGrath. In South Carolina. Eighth meeting all time between two of the top programs in college football. Sam Hartman and the offense a little sluggish. Starting to wonder, we'll get Molly on it, about Andre Gestamik. He came out of the shoot on fire in the last few series. It's been loved primarily in running. Touchback, we check in again with Kevin. Tron AT&T 5G, keeping fans connected as we take a look at our multi-view, which is showcasing a bunch of great games and events across our networks. ESPN right now, got Ole Miss, they got Georgia next weekend, right now up 7-0 against Texas A&M. ESPN 2 Florida just tied things up, and those all blacks in the swamp as they take on Arkansas, Tennessee, SEC Network in control against UConn. And how about North Carolina? Tough couple of weeks with some losses. They're tied up with Campbell over on the ACC Network. Back to you. Boy, it shades of last year for North Carolina. A great start, the awful finish. Estime is back on the field, back doing his thing. He ran out to the 31-yard line, perhaps the 32. They'll mark it at the 31 for a six-yard game. Everything in their offense runs through Audrey Estime. So powerful and strong and it's great vision for a big back. And worth monitoring and very effective when he's been in, but for whatever reason, not much of a bell cow approach so far for the Irish. Sam Hartman takes off running right up the middle. Sam Hartman across midfield. And got to the 32-yard line of Clemson before Barrett Carter made the tackle. And this is great recognition. There's four guys in the box defensively and five blockers. Sam Hartman calls his own number and throw it to the out routes. It's an RPO. You can throw it to the out routes or you can take it yourself. And because of how few Clemson defenders were there inside the tackles, he takes it. And it's a big game for the Irish. Not known as a runner. That's a 37-yard run. He had rushed for eight yards all year. Of course, sack yardage comes off the rushing total. Marked it at the 31. Estime back into the pistol. Running right behind an offensive line that has started the same five all year long. And a 
junior from Nyack, New York, carried it down to the 26. Ruka Roro -Ro -Ro made the tackle. of those Texas Longhorns. Oh, man, they are something. I mean, they had a bad day against Oklahoma and still almost won the game. I mean, three turnovers and a turnover on downs on the goal line stand, and yet it required a miraculous drive from Dylan Gabriel to pull off the upset. So they're very real and clearly improving as the season goes along. Dominique Thomas, the running back now. Second string behind Martha with Shipley out. It's a transfer from Union College. 
college in Kentucky, an NAIA school. He walked on at Clemson, wanted to live his dream, and he's now on scholarship. He transferred when he lost his mom and grandparents in a tornado in their home in eastern Alabama. Third down and four. It is Thomas, and he has the first down. Devil Sweeney said they knew almost nothing about Thomas when he arrived, but they were impressed immediately. But particularly strong in the lower body with huge quads. Yeah, just 5'8", too, and 210 pounds. Low center of gravity and a pretty effective pass catcher out of the backfield. She's strength right there, working against the linebacker, beating him in space to convert first down. It's only 5'8", but 210. A lot of that in the lower body. Two completions in a row for Klubnik after a one-for-six start. Thomas, a big fan favorite. These fans very well aware of uh, his tragic background. And Howard Cross wins up front initially between the right guard and center. And Thomas, just too strong, spins out of the defensive tackles wrap up and find some open space. 10 yard gain, pressure coming, man open, Klumnik got it off against the Heat and completed it for a first down. Sage Ennis, the tight end, injured at the end of the play and he's still not getting up. Pass. Timeout for an injured offensive player. Took a sturdy hit from Xavier Watts, at 18 yard pickup. Big collision there on the sideline, but that was a heck of a throw by Clubman. And Clemson on the move again, up 10 to 6 in the second quarter. Hi, this is Chantrese, and a little thing I love about the Chick fil A honey pepper pimento chicken sandwich is the ribbon. <laughs> Say, Janice walked off under his own power after his third catch of the season, back up tight end. And Klumpnik's three out of three on this possession. Over the middle, top, Bo Collins. First down inside the 20. Four in a row for Klumpnik. All four throws have been right on the money, too. I mean, receivers not adjusting at all. Not breaking stride. That one, Collins kind of jumps to reel it in. Klumpnik very accurate on this possession. 17-yard gain to Collins. Thomas, the running back, he went out on the flat. There's a slant caught for a nine-yard game to the 11-yard line. A sturdy hit by D.J. Brown, the veteran defensive back. In his fifth year in the secondary for the Irish. Here, Riley's having a really nice game so far. Distributing the football, getting a lot of guys involved and mixing in some good run looks as well. Two catches in a row for Collins. 32 for the year. Thomas, just enough for the first down. First and goal at the nine. Here's Garrett Riley, first year at Clemson. 34-year-old offensive coordinator at TCU last year led their offense to the college football playoff championship game where they lost to Georgia two years prior to that at SMU. At least 36 points per game in all three of those seasons, but under 29 points per game in his first season here at Clemson. That's only 63rd in the country in scoring offense. third 
touchdown reception of his true freshman season. Jared Riley loves it. He's and his head coach has built a remarkably consistent program. 12 straight seasons of 10 wins or more. They won't extend that this year, but it's the third longest of all time. Alabama, 15 years in a row and counting. Florida State back in the late 90s, 14 seasons of double-digit wins consecutively. They won't be able to get the double-figure wins. Now they're trying to avoid their first losing season since 2010 when they were 6-7 and seven in his second full year. And it was an interesting week for Dabo Sweeney. Took a call early in the week from a caller to his radio show who was highly critical of Dabo and the program and the money that he makes to run the program. And as is typical of Dabo, Greg, he did not hold back. And we talked about, it used to be so much about appreciation. Now there's expectation. It's a... Uh, one of those seasons, I think this is a little bit of an aberration. Yeah, and it's a little bit of a snake bit season, too, because you can point to individual instances throughout the course of some of their losses that were self-inflicted mistakes. This program will be back and competing for championships again. I'm very confident in that. On first down, Andre Gestame. A long way without being touched. A flag comes flying down during the run. Estime advanced to the 46-yard line. It would be a 21-yard gain. Holding, offense, number 19, 10-yard penalty, his first down. Jaden Greathouse, the true freshman wide receiver, had Jaden Lucas in his grasp. He was engaged for a long time. You'll see him out here as he's blocking and trying to hold up forever. And these Notre Dame wide receivers do an excellent job blocking for Audrey Gestime and company, but holding on way too long that time. That's clear as a bell. As Lucas was trying to slip inside. Good call by the official. Wouldn't let go of the jersey. Spun him around. Big call. Brings the ball back to the 24-yard line. 8.40 to go. Second quarter. An 11-point lead, and that might grow. Delivered in a 
big way right there a moment ago. He's out of St. Joseph's in the Philadelphia area on an incredible high school football team that included Marvin Harrison Jr., the great running back at Ohio State, Kyle McCord, the Buckeye quarterback. Samir Hagan's a running back at Duke. No wonder they won three straight titles in a row. That's redundant. Three straight remain in a row. Is that an all-star team? That's got to be. They all keep in touch, too. They have a text chain. They're quick to get in touch with each other, congratulate each other after big wins. There's that Ohio State punch number one in the first edition of the rankings. Estime rushed for two. Only six pass attempts against the secondary that is riddled by injuries. Catch out wide, Tobias Merriweather. Another young player they think can do more, speedster, sophomore from the state of Washington. That was a 10-yard pickup. Merriweather and Rico Flores have been inserted in the lineup for one reason, to create more explosive plays downfield. Scramble drill, Merriweather breaks away for a little separation and a nice completion. On first and ten, Destiny wrapped up and taken down by Xavier Thomas, the grad student in his sixth year. Lots of injuries from one of the most highly recruited players in Clemson history. Had a bit of an up and down season. And a little trouble prior to the Miami game. And couple weeks and has played well so far today. Estime the running back on second and ten near midfield. Hartman takes the check down to Estime and he's stuck just shy of the 50. Trotter there with Wayne Woodass. Defense. 
defensive coordinator. Important call against Hartman. They brought pressure. And a wide open receiver. Estimate down the sideline. Lunging for the pylon. He's out of bounds. Short of the goal line, but down inside the three. Well executed against the pressure by Hartman. And there was some confusion with the linebackers. They had shifted to the left to bring pressure off the right. That means it was Xavier Thomas who should have been out in coverage against Estime in the flat. He was late getting there. Estime does a great job tightrope in the sideline. Side and the progressive pylon cam has a good look where he stepped out just inside the five. 22 yards on the completion to Estime. First down and goal for the Irish at the three. Approaching three minutes to go in the half. Estime just trying to power it in. And nothing doing. Notre Dame here, you need to be a little mindful of the clock as well. Take your time. Yeah, I think that's why they're going very slowly. And ordinarily, you might say Clemson perhaps would use a timeout, save some time to get it back the way they found a rhythm on offense. But they only have one timeout left. Notre Dame has plenty of timeouts for two and a half to go in all three timeouts. Tenth play of the drive, second and goal. Estime stops short of the line to gain. Barrett Carter, one of the best players has ever played for Dabo Sweeney, according to the coach. He made the stop. We approach two minutes to go now in the half. Ball is back just inside the five-yard line. Design rollout by Hartman. Can't find anybody. Throws too high. Throw it over the head of Jay. He looked like he had a little room, but they didn't connect. And Freeman will send the field goal unit out. A huge disappointment. They had first and goal with the three. Tried to go with the sprint right there as Sam Hartman looked like he might have had an opportunity in the flat to hit Rico Flores, but he didn't get there in time. And it's a great stand by Clemson defensively. Schrader has all of their points, two for two. 43 and 30. And this one, another chip shot. Good from 23. You're watching ESPN's Afternoon College Football Saturday on ABC. Minute 32 to go in the half. Spencer Schrader kicks off again. And it'll be a touchback. For a tough start, just one and six in his first six attempts. He's gotten hot. Kate Klubnik now seven for 12, 63 yards, a lot of it underneath. Recognizes man coverage, sees that window, makes a nice throw. All out pressure, he knows the ball's got to come out quickly. Can't block them all. He's Brown on the slant, who breaks a tackle and finds the end zone. He's been very decisive and extremely accurate here in the second quarter. And really looks comfortable today behind an offensive line that is doing a good job in protection. Cade Klubnik's momentum and confidence is felt on the sideline. He's usually pretty quiet and even keeled, but after their last couple touchdowns, he was screaming, firing up the crowd. It's the most emotional I've ever seen him. He talked to Garrett Riley about opening up the passing game some more and talked closely with Bo Collins as well. They bring a blitz. Oh, Maffa got yanked down. The way he got spun down. I think the crowd thought there was a face mask, but there is no flag, nor is it a first down. <laughs> some strength on display right there by Osafa Mensa. He actually grabs the, the strap from the shoulder pad to bring him down. It's remarkable hand strength. Nana Osafo Mensa with the strong points. Jonathan Weitz has kicked a field goal, made three extra points. Big play here, third and two. For Clemson, you think Notre Dame, if they get a stop, would use the timeout. 
it's Mafa. He has the first down. Let's see if now Clemson gets aggressive. They want to line up quickly. Three yard gain. Mafa has 87 yards rushing, 82 on the ground for Estime of Notre Dame. Klubnik. Over the middle, caught, burning stool, and then it came out. A couple of times he couldn't hang on after he was hit. J.D. Bertrand delivered the blow, and Brenning Stool is not getting up. And another big collision. As you can see, Brenning Stool working inside, and, and Bertrand delivering a big shot right to the midsection to break up that pass. Big collision. That's two now. Clemson tight ends that have gotten some big hits. Sage Ennis a little earlier and Brenning Stool now who might just have the wind knocked out of him and thankfully jogs off under his own power. Without some of their top wide receivers, they've leaned more and more on the tight end. Brenning Stool. Big target at 6'6. A very good pass receiver. Second and ten. Moff for the running back. Design draw for Klubnik, and he got clubbed back at the 34. Notre Dame has two timeouts left, and they have a third down upcoming. And, the, and took advantage of those turnovers from Notre Dame, and they were able to run the football really well with Phil Moffa. They also, I thought, did a great job in coverage, made life very difficult for Sam Hartman and these Irish wide receivers. Short kickoff. And Adam Randall brings it back. 15 yards on the return. Here's Molly McGrath. Well, Sean, at the half, Dabo Sweeney had a lot to be happy about, but like you mentioned, he was most pleased with that plus two in the turnover margin, saying this is the first time all year we've had a complete game in all three phases. He loved his team's red zone play on offense and defense and said, I love their fight, love their effort, but we need a complete game, not just a complete half. And before taking the field, Clemson players reminded each other of the loss to Florida State, saying we can't let them back into this game. We need to stay aggressive and not Trotter, the pick six. Notre Dame twice in the red zone, and Clemson kept them out of the end zone. Forced two Irish field goals well in the red zone, three and all. Pass for Bo Collins. He was being held. Crowd can't believe there isn't a call. It's Benjamin Morrison, the sophomore from Phoenix, out of Brophy Prep on the coverage. Yeah, quite a bit of contact there between Morrison and Collins as he goes on that locked curl route. I thought he might have gotten away with one right there as you oh, see the right so. arm I mean, draped around Collins' back. Yeah, he has a left arm up on the shoulder pads of Collins, didn't let go. Notre Dame very fortunate there. Now the Irish showing blitz from the left of Klubnik and they bring it. Ahead for seven. He might be heading for a career day. His career high is 106 against Louisville last year, his only career 100 yard game. And he's up to 93 today on 12 carries. Yeah, and they just couldn't tackle him in the first half. I mean, there were several opportunities for Irish defenders to drop him for little to no gain. Phil Moffa filling in nicely for the injured Will Shipley as the featured back for the Tigers. Joined us late, Shipley out of action, a concussion last week in their loss to NC State. Trouble with the snap, Klubnik still fielded it, and it's an interception off the ricochet. Xavier Watts again, and he's knocked out of bounds inside the two. Bo Collins couldn't hang on. The first turnover of the game for Clemson. And it's Watts now leading the nation with seven interceptions. And it all started with a low snap. Yeah, and Will Putnam has Howard Cross lined up right over the top of him in a nose guard position. That kind of forces the snap low. Klubnik tries to save it. The ball is pretty well thrown and probably should have been caught by Collins. 
lines. Instead, it's batted up in the air, and the progressive pylon cam shows that Watts was hit just inside the five. What a tremendous start for the Irish. Senior from Omaha, Xavier Watts. Xavier was a wide receiver for a long time during his time at Notre Dame. Nation's leader. That's his fifth interception in the last three games. Audric Estime to the goal line. Touchdown, Notre Dame. Get the takeaway, and Audric Estime bending it back to the left-hand side and surging forward just far enough to get in the end zone. Great job paying off the tremendous field position given to them by the Watts interception. Schrader the extra point. And that makes it a one-score game. First touchdown of the day for the Irish. The 13th rushing touchdown of the season for Audric Estime. Xavier Watts has been one of the great stories of college football this year. Started his career as a wide receiver. Hands have been on display all season long, but for whatever reason, Sean, the ball always finds him. It's always in the right place. If it's out on a fumble or out on an interception or a deflection, he seems to always be in the right position. And he reels it in again for his nation-leading seventh interception of the season. From his wide receiver days, he's obviously got excellent hands, a great tracker of the ball. And he has been in the right place at the right time, Molly. Yeah, that's right, Sean. Well, Watts told us the two keys to picking off the ball. One, your teammates doing their job. Two, confidence. You guys mentioned he's a converted wide receiver. He said those instincts are still with him. Give him the confidence to position himself to get the ball. The only thought in his head is this ball is mine. And you can see that confidence and those instincts on display. Randall back for the kickoff. This seven interceptions for Watts have now led to 41 Notre Dame points directly off his interceptions. Randall didn't try to return it this time. And estimate the touchdown, 13th rushing score of the year for the junior. That is one shy of the national lead. With Damian Webb of South Alabama, 14 rushing touchdowns. 108 total yards for estimate. He's off to a great start today. A lot of their action in the first half of perimeter runs. Anticipate here as we move forward in the second. Probably going to see a little bit more of him getting downhill. First turnover of the game for Clemson. The opening minute of the second half. Moffat down. Joshua Burnham the tackle after a two-yard pickup. Nine, 95 yards rushing now for Phil Moffat, Jr. from Loganville, Georgia. They go over the middle. Brandon Stone has a first down. 38-yard line where Maris Leofau made the tackle, the pickup of 11. So far, Garrett Riley's done a great job of recognizing when Notre Dame is in man coverage. That's their primary coverage. That's who they are. But when they've found Brinning Stool against linebackers and safeties, they've looked in his direction. And for the most part, the receivers have created decent space against excellent cornerback tandem. Maffa into the boundary. Maffa cross midfield. And that could well be now a career high for the junior running back. D.J. Brown the tackle. And you look on the left side, Joshua Burnham, the defensive end, slips inside the left tackle of Tristan Lee. And he just secures the edge very easily as Maffa gets outside and turns up field for a nice game. A 15, 110 is the career high. More, more than he had against Louisville last year. And showing no signs of fatigue on a busy day. Down to the 32-yard line he goes. Jack Kaiser made the 
tackle. 14 more from Mafa. You got to give some credit to the right tackle, Blake Miller, just washing that. Riley Mills, number 99, down inside. Mafa cuts right off his block. Has a little wiggle, and you see the acceleration. He's much, much faster and decisive than we've seen here the last few weeks. Really running hard today. A good game last week at NC State as well when he rushed for 84 and two touchdowns. Club Nick on target. Contested catch. Still a battle going on between Stellato and Morrison. First down, Clemson on a 15-yard play to Stellato, who's really come on as the year's gone on. And great protection, too, from Clemson's offensive line. Notre Dame brings a little heat off the right-hand side. Man-to-man -man coverage in the back end between Morrison and Stellato. Strong hands on display for Stellato, who goes all the way through the catch and even and some afterwards. There's great hands there. Which one Garrett Riley talked about yesterday about Stellato. Very strong hands. Mafa, nowhere to go there. Driven back by Joshua Burnham. Just talk about how Klubnik's a great competitor, has a knack for putting mistakes quickly behind him. And that's what Clemson is doing on this drive after the first turnover of the day. It set up the touchdown. They're marching down the field. Seventh play. Klubnik off target. Might have felt the pressure coming from behind. Randall, the intended receiver. Javante Jean Baptiste, the transfer from Ohio State, brought the heat. First time we've really heard from him today. Jean Baptiste has played excellent these last few games, starting with the SC game, a tremendous dis difference maker on the edge, and applying the pressure to force that throw off target. Third down, nine. Clemson three out of seven on third down. They are in field goal range for Jonathan Whites. With Mafa the running back and a three receiver bunch to the left. Collins wide right. He's the target. On the slant, he held on to that one and got the first down with about two yards to spare with Benjamin Morrison in coverage, 11 yards. Pressure being brought off the right-hand side. It's well protected and great separation and suddenness there from Bo Collins on the slant. They've hit that route five or six times today, and Morrison has not really had much of an answer. Thomas in the backfield. They fake it there into a crowd flag down. Trying to get it to save Janis. Xavier wants the primary coverage. Pass interference. Defense number zero. Ball be placed in the two yard line. This is a good call by the official. Watts, guy that had the interception earlier, engaged initially with Sage Ennis, who tries to break free on the slant. Aggressive pylon cam shows that left arm around the back of Ennis, and it's a good call. So first and goal, Mafa driving. Did not quite get in, at least not yet. Crowd down by that goal line celebrating Mafa. Thought he got in. There's a big collision there. Jack Kaiser and a couple other Irish defenders. It does look as though Moffa's just short of the line to gain. He already has two games with two rushing touchdowns this year, trying for a third. Again, hit in the backfield. Jack Kaiser, the penetration. And that one is a slight loss. You got really two downs to get it here, but that time, Cade Klubnick going under center. Nothing too cute about just a straight downhill run. 
with how Notre Dame is currently selling out, they've had some effectiveness the last couple weeks with designed quarterback run, direct snap. And maybe that's what they opt to go with here on third and short. Let him play the drive. Not sure it's four down territory, given a field goal would make it back to a two-score game. Back 
to a one-score game. Sam Hartman trying to beat Clemson for the first time in his fifth try as a starting quarterback. Looked like he might head out of bounds. Saw more green grass. Took it into the end zone. Country, beautiful part of the United States. Now it's 70 delightful degrees. And a good game. And a nice rivalry in recent years. Notre Dame and Clemson. The Irish just scored to get back within eight points. Schrader. And Randall lets it bounce. Here's Molly. Well, Sean, Dabo Sweeney told us no matter the record, this team was going to fight. And you can see on the sideline, Clemson is playing with incredible effort. After that touchdown, running back Phil Maffa and some O-linemen were getting oxygen. You can tell they are putting their all into this game. And Maffa told us they may not be playing for a playoff spot, but they're playing for something much bigger than that. He said they are playing for pride, and that is translating onto the field today, guys. Well, they know what the standard is here, and they're not having a season that reflects that. Not what anybody expected. They're determined to finish strong. They take a reverse to Brown. Klubnik throws it deep for Collins. There's a flag down. He was grabbed as he tried to run under. It was Cam Hart who had the coverage. Defense number five. 15-yard penalty with an automatic first down. Against the veteran Hart, making his 30th career start. Great recognition there by Klubnik. Plays really designed to just be a dump into the flat. Instead, he sees Collins, who gets behind Hart, who has to tug the jersey to come back up. But if he didn't, that's likely going to be a completion because of how well the ball was thrown. So a good call by the official, but probably at the same time, pretty smart penalty there by Cam Hart. 15 yards from the line of scrimmage, which is now the 40. Four penalties assessed at Notre Dame. Still none against Clemson. Wide receiver screen to Stilato. A sophomore from Fort Lauderdale. He's been bothered by injuries. We said to Garrett Riley yesterday, boy, Stilato's come on. We really didn't know a lot about him until recently. And Garrett Riley said, neither did I. <laughs> and he's been really solid for them these last handful of weeks, obviously with the couple guys being out and Antonio Williams and Cole Turner and Tyler Brown occasionally being a little banged up to open the door for him and Grinning Stool to really step into a featured role and they've answered the challenge nicely. Back to Maffa, still breaking tackles, first down. Into Notre Dame territory. Credit the tackle to Jordan Botello. So impressed with Phil Moffa today. I mean, every time it seems as though he's going to get stopped at or around the line of scrimmage. He seems to wiggle his way into a nice hole that develops late. He's showing a lot of patience and great acceleration really all throughout the game. Klubnik got hit as he threw, and it was deflected by the Notre Dame defense. Kaiser went diving for it. Bertrand was nearby as well. A couple of the veterans, both of them graduate students on the Notre Dame defense. Man, this is big time here by Riley Mills. You see him working against Trent Howard there at left guard. Tough matchup for Trent Howard. Riley Mills used to be an edge guy, and his body, according to Al Golden, just wouldn't let him stay as a defensive end. They slid him inside. He's become very disruptive at 6'5", 300 pounds. Moff up, stopped right at the line of scrimmage by Mills with help from Gabriel Rubio, a backup up front. Last time they were in a similar defensive set, they took Howard Cross, number 56, Riley Mills out of the game for now. Took number 56 and lined them up right over the center. And it caused some disruption with a low snap. Let's see if Howard Cross engages with Putnam again. Third down and 10, four minutes to go, third quarter. Klubnik, short throw. They need a lot of run after the catch. And it was Stilato broke one tackle, but then stumbled down short of the first down. We'll love to 
see the sportsmanship on both sides. Players helping each other up. Six yard gain and uh, a decision now for Dabo Sweeney. And the offense is staying on the field. Fourth down and four. They've had a lot of success today working slant routes to their X receiver. Let's see if they try to work one right here. This time it's Adam Randall on the perimeter. And it's a quick kick. Call by Davo Sweeney and executed perfectly. This is Eckrich Statement Saturday. So it's going to come down to this. Look, well, Kev, kind of a trick play, a little fake run, but try to throw a little jump pass. And on a day when Ohio State's 0 for 5 on third down, 136 yards total offense. The defense scores a touchdown, Kev. Jordan Hancock to the house, 93 yards. Buckeyes back on top, 14-9. Sean? All right, gentlemen, thank you. Here it's Notre Dame down by eight with the ball from their own four. After the quick kick. Estime gets a couple. Here's Molly. Well, Sean, bad news for Notre Dame. Zeke Carell, their center, is out with a concussion suffered in the first half. He's not even here on the sideline. So Andrew Kristofik will move over for him. And now he is down with an injury as well, Sean. And grabbing at his right knee, Kristofik, a graduate student, experienced backup. But they would have to go to Ashton Craig, the sophomore. The third string center, who's warming up on the sideline with Hartman. Yeah, that's really tough, too. And it's fortunate that you have such a veteran presence in Sam Hartman to be able to handle the communication up front, but to rely on a young freshman deep in your own end, it's a really tough spot to enter the game. And a word of advice from Rocco Spindler, the other offensive lineman. Tough situation to step into for a very inexperienced player. Out of Lawrenceburg, Indiana. Six, four and a quarter, 307 pounds originally. You saw the updated numbers on the graphic. Good news is Christophic doesn't appear to be in a lot of pain as he walks off. So perhaps he can return. Stoffick gets off the field. Clean snap by Craig, and the pass incomplete. High ball through the hands of Tyree as they fake the screen one way and threw it the other. Play that takes a little time with Hartman drifting back into the end zone. gesturing from the Clemson sideline. Pass interference. Offense number 19. Well, Jaden Greathouse, who's been flagged a few times today. Greathouse is engaged with Makuba there on the edge, trying to create a little bit of a rub for Tyree, but he is way too physical with Makuba, and it was a pretty easy call for the official. Big situation for Bryce McPherson out of his own end zone. Camp Green back deep, end over end punt. Green to midfield. Let's bring in Matt Austin on the previous play. It was a big call. What'd you think, Matt? 
Well, I agree with Greg. It, it was a good call. It's up to the offense to avoid contact with the defense. Sometimes the defense will try to engage you, but you can see 19 just goes in with two hands and gives him a big shove backwards. That's the textbook offensive pass interference. Against the freshman from Austin, Texas, Greg House, the same school that produced Kate Klubnick, won three straight uh, state titles at Westlake in Austin, same school that produced Drew Brees and Nick Foles. He is a gritty competitor, Klubnick. Offensive line not as good as it's been in recent years. Receiver group depleted today without Shipley. Oh, my goodness. Was he lucky to get away with that? Benjamin Morrison saw that coming, and if he was a fraction sooner, he would have picked it off. Instead, it's a loss on a completion to Randall. Yeah, and that was really just kind of hesitant from Sage Ennis, number 11. You got to go fast if you're the tight end. You're trying to protect your wide receiver and kind of went with no urgency. As a result, Morrison was able to get in there and nearly picked it off. Loss of three. Then he lost the field position big here. In the final two minutes of the third quarter, and Clemson a field goal away from a two-score lead again. Stolano couldn't catch the quick one. With Morrison, the terrific sophomore in coverage. Down and 13. 50 percent on third down today for Clemson. Keep an eye out for the shallow cross right here on third and longs. They hit that a lot. Twisting inside, they get there. Klubnik goes down. Howard Cross and Javante Jean Baptiste with the first sack of the day for Notre Dame for an 11 yard long. And this is Jean-Baptiste that sets it up for Cross. Twisting all the way from the other side of the center, walks the left tackle, Tristan Lee back. And Cross comes in to clean it up. As Trent Howard, the left guard, number 75, tries to hold on for dear life. That's just a great game and execution by the Notre Dame defensive line. So Swanson to punt with a minute to go in the third quarter. Not his best, Tyree. Evans out for the year with a knee injury. 
suffered last week. Third down and seven Irish. Two for eight on third down. Hartman's just nine out of 17 passing for 122. They rush five. Hartman flushed. Hartman back to the line, and that's it. Run down by Jeremiah Trotter with original pressure from Barrett Carter. There's good initial protection from Notre Dame. You see Jabron Payne. He's actually going to get a good block on Barrett Carter initially, but ball's got to come out quicker. It's great coverage in the back end by the Clemson secondary. Hartman has to take off, and really nothing there for him at all. It's a great stand there from Clemson. Bryce McPherson to punt. Low and very returnable for Hank Green. Well covered by the Irish. Clemson will start at the 34 with an eight-point lead, 42-yard punt. Tuesday, the exclusive reveal, the second version of the updated college football playoff top 25 rankings. Reese and the guys will break it down from top to bottom, have coaches' reactions, an interview with the chairman, Boo Corrigan. That's at 7 o'clock on ESPN and the app. Here were the rankings that came out this past Tuesday, brought to you by Allstate, Ohio State, number one, but having a very difficult time at Rutgers. They have a great resume, but offensively, they've just been really inconsistent. I'm not sure about the eye test yeah, with they, the Buckeyes. They, they get it done, but it's never pretty. Phil Maffa. Down to the 38, perhaps the 39. 138 yards for Maffa, most by any Clemson player in rushing yards in a game this year. Now Klubnik taking his time. Mentioned all of the Clemson injuries. There have been reports not disputed that Klubnik from time to time has been seen around campus wearing a boot on his lower leg. Maffa across midfield and taken down from behind at the 41-yard line of Notre Dame by J.T. Bertrand. Yeah, it's really well blocked on the right side. You have three for three, and you got to have the hit by number 27, J.D. Bertrand, but he's late getting there. Maffa gets to the outside and turns in another big game. That's just poorly defended there by J.D. Bertrand, who's got to get contain on Maffa before he gets the edge. He has three tackles today. That gives him 250 for his career. Second, 22nd Notre Dame player to reach that milestone. Maffa. Run out of bounds. I think great to what Garrett Riley said about Maffa yesterday. He runs with great tempo. So he's not in too much of a hurry, but he's also quick through the hole when it's there. And I think that was a good example of patiently waiting to see if he could find some running room. He's a great runner. It's, it's so fun to watch. He, he doesn't have that home run hitting speed that you see from some guys that are, you know, 4-3, four, 4-4. Four, four. He's not around there. But my goodness, he's productive because he always seems to find the hole when it uncovers. Jonathan White's his long field goal is 41. Good play fake by Klubnik, and then he got walloped at the 35. Hit hard by Jack Kaiser, a fifth-year graduate student. Here's a huge third down. I don't know if they try one with White's. Now, Robert Gunn, who was the kicker at the beginning of the year and struggled, has a big leg. He could make one from here. White's as long as 41. Probably thinking, though, with their inconsistencies in the kicking game, probably four-down territory here, depending on getting positive gain here on third and medium. Trouble with the snap, and Klubnik has to dive on it. That takes them out of everybody's field goal range. Stake prone team all year. There's another big one. And that's another example. We talked about it a little earlier when Howard Cross is lined up right over Will Putnam. That's 
twice now that the snaps have been errant. That time way over the top. The last time it was low. Putnam having a difficult time when he gets that head up nose guard. Howard Cross is among the most productive defensive tackles in the FBS. And he leads all power five defensive tackles and tackles for the year. Tyree handles that one cleanly with the sun behind him. 11.03 to go. Notre Dame down by eight. With them for a full postgame wrap-up. Louisville and Virginia Tech. Who would have thought that when the year began? The only one-loss teams playing for sole possession of second place behind undefeated Florida State. Top two teams in the conference play in the title game. No more divisions. Audric Estime, last three drives for Notre Dame have begun at their own four, their own seven, and this one from their own 14. Peter Woods made the tackle. So far here in the second half, Audrey Estime hasn't had the room that he had earlier in the game. This Clemson defense has done a great job up front, making some adjustments and tackling him in the open field. from time to time makes some bad decisions. Man, that was very fortunate. As Khalil Barnes gets two hands on it with the velocity, just catches the back of the ball and unable to bring it in, but he's likely going to take that one to the house if he can secure it cleanly. Floor's the motion man. Second career interception return for a touchdown. McPherson, a terrific putt. Green back inside his own 35. And a nice return to the 49-yard line of Notre Dame. J.T. Bertrand made the tackle. 55-yard punt, 17 on the return. 9.34 to go. What a day for Jeremiah Trotter. All-American candidate, eight tackles, two sacks, an interception return for a touchdown. The big sack a moment ago to force a Notre Dame punt. He's been all over the field and has really impacted this game more than any defender by a mile. I mean, he has been a nightmare for Sam Hartman and the Irish. Field position continues in Clemson's favor. They haven't done much with it. Last three possessions have started at the 50, their own 34, now the Notre Dame 49. Moffa dives ahead for a yard. We're under nine and a half minutes to go. The largest Clemson lead was 15 at halftime at 24 to nine. The field position that Clemson's had the last couple possessions and the way they're running the football, Notre Dame is really selling out up front, getting those safeties real involved. The deepest defenders, only eight or nine yards. I'd really strongly think about taking a shot here at some point. Weaknesses of both teams. They really don't have wide receivers who scare you a lot as deep threats. Oh, boy! A little late option pitch. And it was high. Hit Maffa up around the headgear. Goes for a four-yard loss. That's a nightmare back to Duke when there's some problems with exchanges when they turned it over twice inside the eight-yard line. Yeah, very fortunate that Moffa was able to get on top of that with two Notre Dame defenders getting ready to pounce. Just looked like he wasn't ready to receive the pitch. Just poor pitch relationship there between Klubnik and Moffa. Feels like uh, almost a rope-a-dope here for Clemson, just trying to run out the clock. They can't do anything on offense. Maffa stopped well short of the first down, and they'll have to punt again. 
can't imagine they're going to go for this on fourth and nine or long eight. Uh, not with how their defense is playing and knowing that Sam Hartman's been pinned back most of the last, gosh, 10, 15 minutes of ball game. Very few drives outside the shadow of his own upright. So, well, we would say this. Swanson, we are told, is an adept thrower. I don't know if you just continue to pin them deep and rely on your defense, but at four and four, if you're thinking about a big play on special teams and a field position, fake wouldn't be out of the question. Instead, it's a very good putt by Swanson. And Notre Dame will start inside the 10 again. 40 yards by Swanson. When you order Domino's online, we'll give you a free pizza to use for a future pizza. One's up by 20. Jonathan Brooks, the fumble here, boys. Yeah, really good job by the linebacker putting his hat on the ball. Ball comes Lou Kevin. K-State has lights in Austin. Yeah, they recover and they got the ball in the first play. Will Howard and Jace Brown. I love it. Safety bites up. Nice little post there. And the Wildcats are rumbling, Kev. Point after no good, so it's tied 27 all, Sean. All right, here it's a one-score game, seven and a half to go. They give it to Faison. And he's tackled. Why not try him? He has some speed, playmaking ability. Originally, the plan was he just redshirt this year in football. He came on a partial lacrosse scholarship. When you go to the football program and you play the game, you have to be on a football scholarship. That way you can't hide players who you intend to play in your football program in other sports and give them money through other sports and exceed the football scholarship limit. They got to the point because of injuries and his talents, they had to play him at Louisville. There's a flag down. Hartman dumped it off, surrounded by Tigers. Holding. Offense number 54. Penalty is half the distance to the goal. It's second down. Blake Fisher, the right tackle. He's engaged with Xavier Thomas and see that right arm around Xavier Thomas's neck and just slings him to the ground. That was a good call by the referee. Fifth Notre Dame penalty for 40 yards. Clemson has not had a penalty walked off against them. Estimate the running back. He has only five yards rushing in this half after 82 in the first. 49 of those on the opening drive. Pass to nowhere. In the general direction of Tyree, but closer to a couple of Clemson Tigers. Two out of ten on third down. The average starting field position of the last four Notre Dame possessions is their own eight. Six-yard punt by McPherson. It's Statement Saturday. Oklahoma and Oklahoma State in Bedlam. The final statement made in that rivalry, at least for a while. It'll be the 118th meeting. OU leaving the Big 12 for the SEC. That's coming up right after us and then tonight. How good is this day of football at ABC? Number five, Washington in L.A. to take on USC at 7.30. Washington 8 0 for just the sixth time in school history. First time since 2016. Maffa 
took the handoff from Klubnik, went straight ahead across the 45, and the next time they snap it, it'll be under six minutes to go. Continuing to feed Moffa on what's been a career day, approaching 30 carries now. Probably surpassed that, you would assume, in the next couple plays. Notre Dame's defense has adjusted nicely here these last few possessions and haven't allowed the missed tackles that plagued them earlier in the ballgame. Notre Dame showing blitz on second and eight. tackle for the Irish and really nicely done too up front Putnam working against Howard Cross you see two Irish defenders kind of reaching for Maffa but he's way too strong with so much momentum downhill he won't be able to stop that like you referenced Sean he was a shoelace away from potentially going the distance the rushes and yards all new career highs the two touchdowns matching his career high Third time he's done it this year. Last week at NC State, earlier in the year here against Charleston Southern. Stop there. And time now becoming a big problem for Notre Dame. Not quite to the point where they need to be thinking about burning some timeouts, but another first down, that will become a big part of the discussion for Marcus Freeman. Harrison very wisely running the clock down. In no big hurry. And if they could get to field goal range and kick one, that might well do it. Maffa with a timeout called by Clemson right before the snap. Prior to the snap, timeout. Clemson, their first, 30 seconds. Dabo Sweeney and the Tigers up by eight with 4.05 to go. Dabo Sweeney became the head coach in 2008. Howard coached here for 30 seasons. Dabo will join him in the Hall of Fame someday. Second down and nine. Mafa, big tackle by Kaiser. Looked like he would bounce to the outside and go for much longer. Instead, a two-yard gain, probably not in field goal range. The longest attempt by Whites was a 51-yarder, which he missed. The second longest was a 43-yarder against NC State last week, which he also missed. It was long as 41. Third down and seven. Three and a half to go. Incomplete. Kaiser sniffed out the screen. Marcus Freeman will get the ball back again. He has all three of his timeouts. Klubnik and the Tigers have not been able to deliver a knockout punch. Or even just give themselves a little breathing room with another score. And that was a huge stand right there. Pressure being called by Al Golden, the defensive coordinator, but linebacker Bertrand and Kaiser on consecutive plays making really really good decisions and good football plays to get off the field. Swanson one of the stars of this game for Clemson. How about that one? He can power five quarterback to lose five times in his career to the same opponent. Chris Ricks of Florida State against Miami in the early part of this century. Big thing here in a two-minute drive situation. Just got to get the drive started with positive yards on first down. They haven't done anything on offense in this half. It's a short dump over the middle to Estime. Wrestled down. We know they have all three timeouts, but they have a long way to go, and a field goal doesn't do them any good. So uh, Hartman wise to tell the teammates they need to speed it up. They need to have a little urgency. They haven't been able to manufacture any big plays. They're going to have to nickel and dime their way down the field. incomplete. Xavier Thomas becoming the presence in front of Hartman. He's given the right tackle. Blake Fisher a lot of problems these last couple of series. Beat him on the upfield rush and that time gets a hand on Hartman to force the incompletion. Only four first downs in this half. 
for Notre Dame. They are running a lot of screens. Things on. He's the playmaker. He's to the 22. Khalil Barnes, fellow true freshman, made the tackle 12 yards on one they absolutely had to have. But the clock is running. And they are substituting and huddling. Marcus Freeman not comfortable with that. And I don't know why they're huddling. I mean, you got to manufacture a lot of yards. You've got to have more urgency. It's got to be emphasized from the head coach to the offensive coordinator. Hartman giving time this time. Throws a little underthrown for Faison, who had a step on Andrew Makuba. The nickel dropping into coverage. Yeah, if that ball's thrown just a little bit better, Faison wins to the outside. He's got plenty of space, but the ball is underthrown. Looks like Hart was trying to go with the back shoulder and is really well defended by Andrew Makuba. Missed opportunity there for the Irish. Just 50% for the day, 12 out of 24. Nothing down the field, that one's intercepted. Throw it down the field over the head of Tyree. Kylan Griffin, the true freshman with his first career interception. Peyton Page is engaged right here with the right guard, Rocco Spindler. He beats him inside delivers a hit to Hartman, which forces the ball to go really high. And it floats over the head of the intended receiver, Tyree, as Griffin was right there waiting to reel it in. Great presence there by the defensive tackle. And a forced throw there by Hartman puts his team on life support. Third Irish turnover. Second Hartman interception. He did not throw an interception in their first six games. He's now thrown seven in their last four. Mafa. Eight-yard gain. Timeout Irish. Xavier Watts made the tackle. Timeout. Notre Dame. Their first. 30 seconds. 186 yards. Rushing for Mafa on 32 carries. Here's a look at the All-State playoff predictor. Looking at those undefeateds, Washington going to be in a tough one tonight on the road at SC. Everyone riding the Trojans off, and Washington has not been playing good football these last couple weeks. So maybe the Trojans pull off the upset tonight in the Coliseum. Ohio State survived a bit of a scare at the moment. Missouri heads to Georgia. And Georgia seems to be able to flip that switch, Sean. Whenever they respect their opponent, they seem to play at a remarkably high level. So it's a schedule coming up for them. Very difficult three-game stretch. Florida State would seem to have a pretty comfy schedule.
him to the 42 with a 15-yard scamper. Not known as a runner, but he's had three runs today of 15 yards or more. That was a great job of moving in the pocket. Nothing there initially. Well defended in the back end by the Tigers, but he escapes. There's no one there to the left side. Everyone great in coverage. Takes off and makes a nice play with his legs. Mafa hoping the defense can bail him out. Does Notre Dame have anybody who can make a play downfield in the passing game? Hartman fires to the sideline, a little bit too far in front of Tobias Merriweather. Avion Terrell, the freshman, in coverage. Injuries all over the defense, so freshman Terrell, Griffin, and Barnes have all seen action most of the day in that secondary, and they've more than held their own. 17, Rico Flores in the slot. Keep an eye on him. He's a big play threat. Hartman looked in that direction. Now throws for single coverage. And it falls incomplete. A lot of contact between Terrell and Merriweather. Mutual hand fighting there. Clemson has still not been assessed for penalty today. Third down and ten. interesting he was so hot early such a factor early and it's like they completely went away from him in, in the second half yeah they, they couldn't manufacture much on the ground at all they were working the perimeter run game early and thought in the second half they would adjust and maybe start to hit it a little bit more downhill and there just hasn't been anything there they've had no rhythm offensively here outside of the one drop where Hartman made a couple plays with his legs so Got to give a lot of credit to Wes Goodwin and his defense because they made some adjustments in the second half that made life very difficult on the Irish. Estime only three carries in his half for five yards. Off of the ball carrier, Notre Dame can use its last timeout. Timeout, Notre Dame, their third and final, 30 seconds. So Sam Hartman in his sixth year of college football among the all-time 
leaders in career passing yards and touchdowns and touchdowns responsible for. But hasn't been able to do it against Clemson. And uh, there's no disgrace in that. One of the best programs in the country over the last decade plus. And not a lot of help. I mean, other than Estime, not a lot of guys running open in the passing game. Certainly the loss of Evans, the tight end hurt as well. Their leading receiver for the year. Big time. They really miss him as just that reliable go-to piece especially on third down and in the red zone, but the protection hasn't held up very well. And Blake Fisher, the right tackles had a tough day. The backs have had a tough day in protection as well. Just a bunch of problems offensively for Notre Dame. He came in on a roll. They outscored USC and Pittsburgh a combined 106 to 27. They said all the right things. They weren't taking Clemson lightly. They know Dabo Sweeney has a ton of talent that they've lost a lot of really tough and heartbreaking games. And they made it harder on themselves than they needed to today with the late fumble by Maffa. With 36 carries, exactly twice as many as his previous career high of 18 last year against Syracuse. He had too good a day to have that fumble become the defining moment. He was excellent, and you referenced, I mean, the mistake is glaring and potentially a backbreaker, but he's the reason why they have this lead, and here with five seconds remaining, you call a play offensively, you're going to put your offense on the field, you don't want to take the risk and punt the ball away, you, Sean, know better than anybody what happens potentially with a... Oh, he has trouble with the snap. <laughs> we all know about and that the play. Free. That so, won't, so I've hit puberty since that <laughs> Michigan Michigan State game, so we won't reenact it. I don't know if there's going to be a Jalen Watts Jackson moment in this one because what you'd call with five seconds left, you'd call a play called Rambo Airball. You would roll the quarterback to the right, tell him to throw it as high as humanly possible, and land it just out of bounds, about five yards out of bounds, with a little bit of a half roll as well, and you can hopefully have enough time on the throw for the clock to expire with zeros. Five seconds to go, fourth down and 12. That's what you expect, run around for a bit and launch it high. Klubnik throws it high in the air. Field as they always do. Dabo 